Okay, let's talk about dermatomes and cutaneous fields. And we're going to answer the question, what sensory deficits occur when you injure a brachial plexus root uh, in contrast to injury in a peripheral nerve? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So uh, to, as I go through this, brachial plexus is something you should be somewhat familiar with. You don't necessarily have to label every single thing on here, but you should be at least familiar with this brachial plexus image. So a dermatome is an area of skin supplied by sensory neurons from a single spinal cord level. Here we have the C5 neurological level, and there we have sensory neurons coming from the C5 dermatome to the C5 spinal cord level. But neurons do not float in outer space. There, we now lay over the brachial plexus on top of that. And so we'll recognize that the axillary nerve and radial nerve are the the roads that transmit those sensory neurons from the C5 dermatome to the C5 spinal cord level. Let's look at C6. There we have some sensory neurons from the C6 dermatome, laying it on top of where the brachial plexus is, the muscular cutaneous, the radial and median nerves. All are roadways that transmit or tra uh, transport sensory neurons to the C6 spinal cord level. So a dermatome is an area of skin supplied by sensory neurons from a single spinal cord level, and they may be distributed by more than one peripheral nerve. So let's look at C7, and here we have some of those sensory neurons coming from different areas of that dermatome, and the radial and median nerves are transmitting those sensory neurons. In C8, there we have some C8 sensory neurons, and the ulnar nerve is primarily transmitting those. And then the T1 uh, dermatome area, we see that the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and forearm are transmitting those sensory neurons. So there we have a bunch of these dermatomes. And it looks like those sensory neurons are floating in outer space, but shing! We lay on top of that brachial plexus and we, now we can see the roadways. And that kind of gives me to the analogy of understanding sensation of the brachial plexus is like understanding Google Maps. So we know that you pull up on your phone, you're like, I'm choosing to start from somewhere. And you're like, oh, I'm going to start from Salt Lake International Airport and I need to get to uh, University of Utah Hospital. And so we have this and so we know where we're starting, Salt Lake International Airport. We know where we're ending, the University Hospital. We now do this this. Shing! And the route is mapped out on the map. Well, understanding sensation of the brachial plexus is like Google Maps. Often we take a look at the dermatomes and spinal cord and we know where we're starting, the C5 dermatome. We know where we're ending, the C5 spinal cord level. All we need now are the roads and the route on the map. And that's what the brachial plexus and these tracings become. So let's do a little practice. If the following was injured, ching, what sensation in the C6 dermatome would be lost? All, none, or some. Pause if you want to think through this, and I'm going to continue. Some of the C6 dermatome would be lost because these are, neurons are okay and these neurons are okay. So only part of the C6 dermatome would be lost. If the following is injured, what sensation in the C6 dermatome would be lost? All, none, or some? Pause, and I'm going to continue. All of that dermatome would be lost of the upper limb, not the back, but uh, who cares about the back for now? Uh, for now, uh, the upper limb, or the, the C6 dermatome, the upper limb would be lost if we hit the ventral ramus. So the take home point is injury to the ventral ramus or a root of the brachial plexus is the only way to lose the entire dermatome there. Also, if you hit the dorsal root. Okay, so now let's talk about cutaneous fields. It's an area of skin supplied by sensory neurons from a single peripheral nerve. So here we have a cutaneous field, and there we have the brachial plexus, and there are spinal cord segments. Let's look at the median nerve on the brachial plexus and the median nerve on our diagram. So if we take the thumb, the sensory neuron goes to the C6 dermatome. Now let's look at the, this next one. If we look there, that's the swear finger. So what dermatome is located at the tip of the swear finger? C7, no heaven, and that middle finger. So we follow that all the way back to the C7 level. Okay, so what we see here is that median nerve is that that median nerve is transmitting sensation from the thumb and the index and the swear finger, and those sensory neurons are going to more than one spinal cord level. 
So a cutaneous field is an area of skin supplied by sensory neurons from a single peripheral nerve, median nerve in this case, and it may be distributed to more than one spinal cord level, C6 and C7 in this case. And so here we have all the different major cutaneous fields that you need to know and the different nerves that they're hitting in the brachial plexus. So sensory neurons transport cutaneous sensation to different spinal cord levels, like that. And they're laying on or transmitting within these parts of the brachial plexus. So these sensory neurons come from one dermatome but are distributed by the more than one spinal nerve. So let's follow this out. So we follow these sensory neurons, and now they divide, some going into the lateral cord, some going to the posterior cord, and we keep following them out. They go to three different nerves. So if you injure a ventral ramus, you lose sensation in the entire dermatome. It doesn't matter how many different nerves those sensory neurons are going. You knock out a root, you knock out the entire dermatome. Now, these sensory neurons come from one cutaneous field, in this case, the median nerve field, but they go to more than one spinal cord level. So let's now follow these out. We follow these sensory neurons, and they're dividing and dividing and dividing, and take a look. They go to more than one level. So if you injure a peripheral nerve, you lose sensation in the entire cutaneous field. Let's do a little practice. Identify the area of skin that would lose sensation if the following nerve was injured. Shing, right there. Now take a look at this, identify the letter where sensation would be lost. Pause, and I'm gonna continue. As I yawn, that is so rude. I've been working, <laughs> all of us have been doing stuff, trying to get this content up for all of our students. That was rude for me to yawn. I hope all you yawned, because that's what happens when someone yawns. And it's a beautiful sunset, I thought I'd let you know. I'm looking over the mountains in Wasatch Mountains, they look beautiful. Okay, that musculocutaneous nerve is injured, which means that I'm trying to determine if it's a dermatome or cutaneous field. If it's a peripheral nerve, it's a cutaneous field that will be affected. And then I remember that the muscular cutaneous nerve gives rise to the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which is the correct answer. So if you injure a peripheral nerve, you lose sensation in its cutaneous field. Okay, we knock out muscular cutaneous nerve, we knock out the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Let's do another question. Identify the letters that represent the area of skin that would lose sensation for a lesion in the following location. There are the letters, and now what I want you to do is to pause and think through this. I'm gonna continue with the answer. There is the C5 and the C6 roots in the brachial plexus which make up the upper trunk. So therefore, both the C5 and C6 areas uh, roots of the brachial plexus are not going to be able to be receiving sensation. So we look and there's uh, the C5 dermatome in A and the C6 dermatome in B. And so the axillary nerve will transmit uh, sensory neurons from the lateral shoulder. Musculocutaneous will transport sensory neurons from the lateral forearm. And the median nerve will transport sensory neurons from the thumb. But basically, it's the C5 and C6 dermatomes that will be affected because of that upper trunk. Therefore, if you injure a ventral ramus, or in this case, two ventral rami that make up the upper trunk, you're gonna lose sensation in both of those dermatomes. Where would sensation be lost if the following nerve was injured? Shown there in the yellow arrow. Pause, and I'm gonna continue. So there is where sensation would be lost, in the ulnar nerve distribution only. The other areas would be, other peripheral nerves would be unaffected, only the ulnar nerve. If you injure a peripheral nerve, you lose sensation in its associated cutaneous field. Identify the letter or letters that represent the area of skin that would lose sensation for a lesion in the following location, right there, and then take a look at the letters. Okay, so I'm going to have you pause and think through this. I'm going to continue. There's the C8 and T1 roots of the brachial plexus that make up the lower trunk. And so if we knock out the lower trunk, we affect both the C8 and T1 dermatomes, both of those dermatomes. And so when we see sensory uh, innervation from the ulnar nerve and sensory innervation of the mediocutaneous nerve of the forearm and arm, that's what are all going to be affected. So the take-home message is if you injure a ventral ramus, or in this case, two ventral rami, you'll lose sensation for the associated dermatomes. This is what happens in a Klumski's palsy. 
So in dermatomes, injury to a root or trunk loses sensation in its associated dermatome or dermatomes. Cutaneous fields, if you injure a nerve, you lose sensation in its associated cutaneous field. And that, my friends, is a discussion of the dermatomes and cutaneous fields in a nutshell.